Candlelist Obispo, we won't throw her off, but, and Marina's on from Santa Maria, so we want to welcome the, uh, and, and I think Corley's on from Santa Barbara, so we want to welcome those, those northern coasters uh, north of Los Angeles as well, and anybody else who, who joined us outside of the LA uh, western part of the basin. Um, we had one of these on Monday and it went really well. The, the state level people and the contractors did very little talking and a lot of listening. We got a lot of good feedback from the field. And so hopefully we can follow that same trend today and listen to you what's going on in uh, your area. And what we do is kind of just go through the program areas and talk about how people are approaching the different program areas, what you know, software or platform they're using, what uh, successes they've had, what challenges. And uh, we try to get as many people contributing as possible. So with that, uh, let's open up and talk about ABE ASC, which would include, you know, high school diploma and the GED. We know we had some issues there, but if anybody wants to share how they're approaching this program area, any challenges, any successes, uh, any questions um, that, that you can ask our panel of experts, feel free. So just feel free to unmute yourself and uh, introduce yourself and, and go, chime right in. I guess I'll start. This is Estella from Linwood. We're doing distance learning with um, all of our programs. Only one of our CTE programs, we were not able to continue with distance learning. Um, so teachers are using a hodgepodge of resources. We did a survey today finally in response so that we can respond to the emergency situation impact survey with you know real data. Um, so like I said, we're, uh, the teachers are using anything from Newzella to, I mean, there's various, there's too many to name really. Uh, Estella, what are you offering for adult secondary, like high school diploma? Have you had any problems with, um, as your GED, your students that were close to taking the test? How are you handling those, that student po population? So there, we had several who were scheduled to test in March. We had a test in March. We had one scheduled this week in April. We're still uh, working through how we're going to go forward doing that in in the coming months uh, as far as testing. Those students are still studying remotely with their teachers. Um, the teachers are using a variety of resources like Khan Academy and Newzella, whatever they need to, and same with adult secondary education. We have students who are ready to graduate. Everything is continuing basically remotely for, for us. Um, we're just using various resources to, to deliver. Uh, some teachers are using things like, for example, CK-12. Yeah, I think it's CK-12 to, uh, you know, for their online platform. So there's lots of different ways that teachers are approaching it. Are you seeing students, a lot of students not showing up or is it a hodgepodge or uh, mm -hmm. are you even able to track your student numbers? We're, we're still collecting that information, but, but anecdotal information from our teachers. Uh, some have commented that their students are not showing up. The, this, the teacher that I'm thinking of today teaches um, concurrent students as well as adults at night. And so we've had fewer, I believe, fewer concurrent students um, participating than adults. But still, we have challenges. Our adults all have challenges as well in terms of um, technology, the devices, having access to a device besides their phone, having access to a stable network connection. Um, some of our students are economically disadvantaged and now their phones are, you know, have been disconnected because they can't pay for it. So then that, you know, re removes their access to the information age, you know, to the networks. Um, so in our district, uh, they, have been providing laptops or Chromebooks to all of the K through 12. And in our school, we're providing them as needed from our own Chromebook carts. 
All right, and then what um, platform are you using for high school diploma? So the teachers are using, um, some teachers are using CK-12 in terms of the curriculum, they're using CK-12 or whatever their prior curriculum was. Um, and we also have independent study models. So we have materials that are ready for our students, you know, if we need to copy in. But teachers are continuing to provide lessons through Zoom or Google Meet. They're, they're talking to their students regularly. Great. All right, thank you, Estella. Uh, Francisco has his hand up. Go ahead and unmute yourself, Francisco, if you can. Okay. Um, just to echo on what Estella said, you really nailed it. But I think that I've been from a lot of is, of course, the test, but a lot are to me while emailing me and asking they could do on, for example, that they saw a company that could, uh, I mean, upward hundred dollars to pay for make it on. I think start letting students, but that's not here in California. You cannot uh, think from all this amount of money. Um, you know, I've had like students uh, during the last who were asking me if that would admit size. I mean, it was, I mean, I, I told we, here in California, it's only Pearson, I said, uh, I said, uh, in other uh, but that to pay another company to issue a GE certificate, probably not valid. And they were shocked. It was, it was authentic. Asked them where they, oh, we got an, or saw it somewhere on my book or one referred. And so that's something also led field is our students to fall in this type of system. Uh, so Francisco, it was cutting out a little bit, but from what you said there were, was this, the vendor was charging an extra fee or I couldn't hear all of that, was, but I was just. Yeah, my connect, like Estella's connections back. Uh, some are saying that getting somewhere that they could take, I said, their high school diploma, uh, I'm an ED online. It's through some weird that's not used here in, in uh, states. Um, or being automated mm -hmm. that says that it's a 500 and they could get their ED. Wow. Let's check. Jay or Penny or Netta, have you guys heard of anything like that? With Neil, regarding... this is this is Penny. I didn't hear the Go whole ahead. thing, so um, because I was having the same issue of having uh, the audio was pretty poor. Can, if you heard it, can you summarize it for us? I just heard bits and pieces. Maybe Francisco can just type it in the chat, and then we can comment on it because it does sound like kind of a situation we want to warn people about if. If students are being, you know, possibly charged, I didn't get the whole gist of it. But yeah, great. we uh, we do have a list of some of the um, scams that have been going on. So, uh, yeah, Francisco, if you think that your students are being unfairly targeted or something, let us know, and we can we can certainly um, try to provide some information. But um, yeah, yeah so I see it saying? in the chat. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. I think if if you can get anything from your students of where that's coming from, um, and and if there are, if it's being associated with any particular type of curriculum, um, I'd like to I'd like to be able to try to at least provide some information to help learners and teachers understand that that's coming, and that's been happening, which is just so unfortunate. And I don't know, Netta's on the line as well. She may have heard something uh, and add to this. Right. So, yeah, it's definitely a scam. I know we're working with HiSET and GED to get them to do a couple of webinars for us. And um, they basically said, we're, you know, we're, we're following the governor's um, direction as far as testing's concerned. So there isn't any changes on their end that they're able to announce just yet, but they do want to do, I mean, it, as far as testing is concerned, no changes. Um, as far as materials and free resources that are available through HiSET and GED, that's coming in some upcoming webinars. But testing, I haven't received any 
information. So definitely a scam and we probably do need to um, let our students know that some of this is happening. Great, thank you. Anybody else have anything to share about their high school diploma, their ABE programs? Let's see, you can just unmute yourself or raise your hand or type in the chat, whatever works best for you. Hearing none, let's move on to ESL. Um, anybody like to share of how their ESL programs are going? In the recent network group up north, we heard a lot of kind of innovation with Google Meetup, um, Zoom, all kinds of different things going on with the ESL population. So if anybody wants to share what they're doing, feel free to unmute or type it in the chat, whatever works best. This is Toiby from Corona North Guadalupe, Dead. And I wanted to share a little bit about our high school diploma and high school equivalency classes as well. Uh, the challenges that we are face facing is that um, our, we had two weeks of closure complete. We couldn't do anything during those two weeks. And then right after that, the third week was a spring break. So three weeks of nothing happening. Um, as administrators, we were trying our best to get something rolling, but because the teachers could not get on board because of our union issues with the district, we could not get teachers on board. And then uh, the fourth week when we started getting teachers on board, we still had to work with some teachers on getting the material at a proper, a proper um, you know, in a proper way so that they can all access the same material and have some consistency. So we have been able to now uh, start running our Google Classroom since yesterday. Um, and uh, since Monday this week. And of course, um, students who could not get devices, um, they've been um, contacted by the teachers by phone, but given the number of students we have and the responses we're getting, it's still, there's still a long uphill road to work on. And um, as far as, um, high school equivalency we have had a lot of students who were ready to test in march and april because a lot of them scheduled scheduled to test in march and april and they are all still waiting to test as well uh, on that one too we are our teachers have been able to contact the students and continue supporting them but like i said it took a while for us to get going because of all the union issues and so now we're on it and uh, the response rate is pretty slow esl uh, the team has been able to get um esl teachers somehow were already working on this even during the closure some of them just still connecting with their students so last week we had all the teachers start up the week before was only training and setting up and uh, this week, there have been some success stories in terms of like the seat um, teachers say, of my 40 students, I've been able to get 22 to connect with me and 12 to be on Zoom. Um, the same with citizenship students. The citizenship teacher has been calling each and every single one in the class and have been getting some responses. But some of the stories that we've been getting from our teachers is that a lot, uh, a few of our students are like, teacher, we are in the process of trying to get a new job or, you know, struggling for food. So what we have started doing is converting some of those things into uh, the um, getting all the resources that teachers can get on food, uh, food uh, distribution in the community on a Padlet and everybody sharing that. All the teachers are sharing that with their students. So um, in ESL, EL Civics too, we are thinking of moving a little bit from what we were planning to do something more on uh, community resources. That's just an update from adult, uh, Corona Norgo. Great, thank you. Just a couple of comments in the chat. Lorena said Person, Pearson View, <coughs> excuse me, is asking testing centers to complete a survey regarding future testing. Yeah, we did hear about the possibility of social distancing and making 
testing computers available, but I think it's going to be like half of the capacity that you used to have. And Francisco commented that for ESL, they're using learning upgrades plus Zoom. Seems to be working well. Um, anybody else want to comment on their ESL situation? Or in general, we got a hand up from Sally. Go ahead, Sally. Well, hi. Um, so I'll start with, I, I put my, actually what I ended up doing was clapping. So it looked like I was happy that the comments for high school diploma were over, but I was trying to raise my hand. I, sorry, I usually am running this, not participating. Um, so um, high school diploma, our teachers have been working really hard on getting Google Classroom up. So they've been doing a lot of work on that. We still have students that are, are some just finishing things that they had started and then doing um, different online, online programs. Uh, our um, high set students are just working on this you know, saying where they are since there's no test. Um, and then um, our jail is completely locked down in quarantine and they're not telling us we can come in until August. So still working on trying to figure that out. Um, and then for ESL, um, well, for everybody, our main thing is just connecting with students. So people the teachers are calling students. We have um, everyone in our district is being paid, and uh, even though our adult ed teachers are hourly, they said, if you guys can go online, you can be paid. So we did, and um, not just our, we also have a lot of uh, community programs. So really, we, we've been working very hard. Um, so the main thing is connection with, with our students, and in one way, however they're doing that, through text, phone, emails, um, Zooms, and just making sure everyone has been connected with. And then the community resources has been huge. Um, our district did start immediately on the, we closed on Friday and we're up online on Monday. Um, so uh, ESL, it's been a little bit harder. We have, um, our district has given out Chromebooks to every um, family, so those, teach, those uh, Students who have children in their homes do have Chromebooks in their homes. Um, it has been a little difficult getting them going, but um, there's been the teachers have been working really hard with that connection piece, and then um, getting them on Burlington and some packet work because so we've done some packet deliveries and things like that, just to for those students that need that. So that's us. Great, thank you. Let's see, um, I'm just gonna start calling on people. So I see we have Santa Monica in the house. Does anybody wanna report out from Santa Monica? If not, don't be shy. How about? Hi, this is Lorena oh. from Santa Monica. Oh, great, go ahead. Um, so yes, we're, we didn't take a break at all. We took, I think our district took two days off and then we started up right away with whatever our teachers felt comfortable with. So we did have a two week spring break, but we've all been getting paid and they've been doing the best that they could. Luckily, we were already set up with APEX for both our diploma classes and GD prep through their GD tutorials. So luckily that was an easy transition, but um, our ESL classes and citizenship classes were a little bit more, um, you had to pay a little bit more attention to that, as well as our teachers needed to be trained. So in addition to holding classes, we were, they were participating in a lot of professional development and kind of deciding what was going to work best for their class. Um, I know my citizenship teacher has been very successful, and, but she's very hands-on. Um, and so for her, some of her students that are older and aren't very tech savvy, she's asked family members to help them get online and to show them how to use Zoom or how to use um, email or to text. So that's what's working for her in citizenship. Um, and in ESL, we're using Zoom and we're using Google Classroom, emailing, texting, and calling. 
Um, our district as well has issued uh, Chromebooks to all of the district uh, students. So if the families have Chromebooks at home, then they can use that. But um, we are looking into maybe quite possibly next year, putting some funding aside to have just like a little bank of Chromebooks for those students most in need. Thank you. Great, thank you. So let's uh, keep going up uh, Highway 1, uh, Ventura. Anybody on from Ventura Consortia? Hi, Neil, it's Diana Batista. Hi, Di Hi Diana. I'm not really, uh, affiliated with the consortia, but I have been doing some work with Conejo Valley Adult School. Um, I was fortunate enough to get, I think, uh, eight or nine days in meeting the teachers before we went on a lockdown. So I immediately started reaching out to them and I've been coaching them on using Zoom and things. I've issued a survey to them, a, a Google survey. And in the high school program, I believe they're using Apex, but normally they come into the center to do testing. So they're just working through the chapters and then communicating um, with the teacher. In the ESL department, we use Standout and the students have an online textbook for the lower levels and they use Burlington English with the higher levels. And all 12 teachers have reached out to students. They had more success using Remind than email. Uh, this evening, they're gonna start the um, children's student success classes with there's about 60 students in those programs. And um, they're gonna hold Zoom meetings with the students. I've been teaching them how to share content. And um, we're really kind of just getting comfortable with it this week. And I'm really proud of, of the way that they've stepped up because they didn't seem like they were technically prepared when we first went on lockdown. So that's just a brief summary and I'm, I'm hoping to uh, do more work with them. So Maybe Diana, how, how did, consortia. <laughs> yeah, Diana, how does it feel to be back at the local level? I'm um, <laughs> in a, a very difficult position. So yeah. as, as you know, I'm caring for my, my family and right. many healthcare concerns and it's very different and especially being on lockdown. <laughs> right, right. So. Okay. Miss you well, guys, so, but I know you're all yeah. doing good work. So, yeah, thanks for sharing and good luck with everything. We hope to connect with you soon. Okay, great. Looking forward to it. Bye. All right. Okay, moving up to Santa Barbara, because we already heard San Luis Obispo and Francisco kind of represented the Monterey Bay. Anybody from the Santa Barbara, Santa Maria area want to talk about what's going on? Hi, this is Corley. Uh, can everyone hey, hear me? <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry, I was, my computer's been going off. So I, I'm there, but then I'm not. And then I am, but I'm not. So I'm an apparition right now, but I think I'm here. So thank you. <laughs> okay, so first, <laughs> um, so yes, this has been, this has been uh, definitely a trying time. And we're trying to We've seen a major shift in a couple of offices. The first that's been really helpful for us is our student support services office. And I mean, originally helped students with their life cycle plans, academic plans, uh, but now they've taken on a greater role with respect to admissions uh, because our that's something that it's just uh, we don't, uh, not only attrition but also helping the students. Um, even further with the details of being online and even we were starting to find some cracks in even in our services where we weren't even up to date and so just getting that curve you know that learning curve was a little tricky but they're taking on a little bit of a greater role for admissions which has been helpful because our admissions team on the other side of campus um, they were pretty inundated so I'm glad to see that this is something new that we're doing. We also started, um, we've transformed um, and brought together some of our Career Skills Institute classes. Those are our CTE programs. And we, we sort of packaged them into um, what's called a career recovery program. So it's targeted for anyone who's been un who is unemployed, has been recently um, laid off. And so 
we're tailoring that existing program. So we're not trying to reinvent the wheel, but we're actually seeing that changing a little bit of our marketing initiatives and how we convey what we have has, has we think is going to make a difference. But um, I know one of the things, uh, I have one question I wanted to ask, um, you and the the, uh, the tap team, Neil, is uh, with respect to the budget for, so our budgets for even computers and hotspots, we're finding that, okay, we're like, say, um, funds originally allocated for um, curriculum development or um, um, tutors. So, uh, so we're finding that we need actually to transfer those funds and so are you seeing any kind of a trend where people are needing a the de 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 demand has changed to more hardware and does the state have any problems with the you know uh, these hotspots that were and or is there um last question is there a recommended company i mean our, our it team does a pretty good job i don't know if there's like a a hidden you know any kind of hidden secret or something that says that the company that's offering education. You mean, you mean like a backdoor to China? <laughs> right. <laughs> right. 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 <laughs> where, where, where is that? I know. <laughs> no, so we're, so what I... we, so what we're seeing is we are seeing a shift to schools buying hotspots, loaning out equipment. That's all acceptable, allowable, for CAPE because it's delivery of instruction. So don't worry about that. And we are seeing a shift in a lot of places because not everyone has um, internet cap uh, connectivity, not everyone has the equipment. Um, so we just say, just make sure that if you're loaning them out, you have some kind of policy and procedure that you get the equipment back. We can't really give, give them out, but um, I would see if Penny or Netta had any suggestions on, you know, maybe some bundling or vendors that are really easy to work with or free or something like that, depending if, uh, you know, on the coast, if that's really available, I'll let them respond to that one. Okay. Go ahead, yeah. Penny or Netta. Oh, go yeah, ahead. Yeah. This is Penny. Um, I think that probably one of the, the best places to look at some of those resources, we tend to always try to move toward the free models, is to look at the um, OTAN resources page for a lot of materials that are available online at no cost. I personally am a, a great, uh, an advocate for open educational resources, and that includes, um, you've heard some folks talking about CK12, but that's for curriculum. As for software, I think we've, uh, not software, but um, hardware, it's probably best to reach out to your local providers because many of them um, do offer some really good uh, educational uh, programs and deals in order to get, you know, like hotspots, for example, at highly, highly discounted rates. Um, and, and I don't, I mean, I'm not going to be one that could say this one is better than another because uh, a lot of those service providers have uh, different strengths in different regions. So that's where, you know, I think you're, you're smart in relying on your um, IT team and having them go out and do maybe some comparisons of, you know, do your, um, are they going to cover your area well enough? Do your learners have access? Are they in the right places uh, in order to be able to receive a Wi-Fi signal, things like that. Those are those kind of general questions that come around. But I think that, um, uh, you know, we've, we've seen some really innovative ways where schools are uh, sharing some of the resources that they have. And I see Francisco just posted one in the chat where, yeah, some of the buses that are um, Wi-Fi enabled, they're going out and parking them in those um, kind of desert zones, as I'll, I'll talk about. Uh, or uh, that you that you've heard about um, there are other resources out there in terms of hardware that can help to deliver curriculum to those that are in more remote areas that don't have uh, good um, Wi-Fi connectivity and their um, uh, OTAN has done a couple of uh, webinars on them and they are remote hotspots that also have a huge hard drive in them basically and they're called Rachel devices and it's for remote teaching and learning at, at a distance and it's um, and they come on these little 
on a little box or they can be an actual little USB drive. And I'm, I'm happy to like give you some information via private chat or in the chat box, giving you some links to that information as well. But I think you've already started on the right path with talking to your own IT folks because they know what's going on in your local region in terms of um, the hardware accessibility and deals for access. Thank you. That's that's very helpful. Oh, this, this is good. This is good. Right, and then uh, um, Tobias said everyone is back ordered right now, according to our district, especially the ones that uh, are allowed by our district. Three months back ordered for MiFi as of last week. So district to district, it might vary as far as accessibility on getting purchase orders and orders and things like that. So check check locally with your district office too, as well as your IT people. All right, so let's see. So Corley, thank you. Uh, I thought I saw Marina from Santa Maria. Do we have a report out from Santa Maria? Hi, this is Marina. Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, good. Hi, everyone. Hi, Neil. Um, Hi. <laughs> over at Hancock, um, Initially, most of our um, key program uh, classes were suspended until they were able to be um, uh, delivered remotely. And um, a good number of our ESL classes were able to do uh, remote learning. And one um, of our uh, basic adult ed uh, was able to go remote. Uh, most everything else continues to be suspended. We weren't. We, we were just not able to transition those um, to uh, remote learning. Uh, currently, I think what we're what we're looking at is is how do we transition those classes for summer because of the current state of things, we will continue to only offer remote over summer, is what it appears to be. And um, I think one of the questions that has come up is how do we support our students who um, don't have the computer literacy to register themselves um, when we used to do that face to face and still be compliant with our Title IX and auditing requirements at the college level. Um, I don't know if anybody can share some of what they're doing. We're also a banner school and a CCC apply school. Um, so if there are any ideas out there as to how you, you might tackle that um, as new registration is opening for the next semester. Let, let me know. I'd love to hear those. Marina, we did hear from some colleges and some adult schools the signature requirement. They were there were some different innovative ways to scan them or to send them in somehow. So people are trying to get around that. I don't know. If, so this would be through CCC Apply. For, for the Allen Hancock to well, register? Yeah, in, you know, in the past we'd ha we would uh, sit with them and support doing the CCC apply process and then the Allen Hancock registration process all while sitting next to each other basically. Or they're mm -hmm. coming with a paper form to the counter and, um, and, and all of those are no longer options right now. Right. You know, we, uh, our last call, we didn't have too many colleges on, but and I don't know if we have a lot of colleges on today, but I can ask that at our, our net, uh, next network meeting when we get a few more colleges. I don't know, I saw Ryan is on the call, but I don't know if he's familiar with what Mount SAC is doing to register students. Ryan, are you aware of how they're dealing with registration or their plans to deal with registration on the college campus? Can you hear me, Neil? Yes. Okay, so um, Mount SAC, for their School of Continuing Education, they're actually implementing online registration. And they had actually been working on it for months. And it's just launching. So um, that's, that's it. They do, they have an online registration process, and um, it's just going through the beginning stages of it right now. So any Cleat Mouse Act, you know, or Tammy, or if somebody reached out to ESL directly, 
there. But yeah, they've started online registration. Okay, we'll we'll follow up with uh, Mount Sac. I, I I saw Justin was on the line. I don't know if Justin heard anything from LA CCD how they're doing enrollment and non credit, or if you're aware of that, Justin. Anyhow, that's a good question. Um, I don't have specific firsthand knowledge. I know that they are exploring online registration, but I don't have a recent update on how that is working. Okay. All right. Thank you. So, Marina, we'll continue to follow up on that. I know that's a sticky subject, and I know it's a requirement. So, I know the adult schools seem to have a lot of a lot more flexibility on how they're registering students. And so uh, maybe we can um, figure out from, from the adult schools, maybe get some innovations there, but um, we'll, we'll keep you posted. Thank you. All right, anything else to offer? Okay, so moving back down the coast, let's see, Santa Monica, how about uh, South Bay uh, El Camino? And then we'll move inland. Anybody from South Bay El Camino? Hello. Hi, this is Paula Takamine calling um, in from Torrance Adult School, uh, part of the South Bay El Camino Consortium. And um, so just, and I know that we've got a lot of um, our staff here um, in this uh, meeting, so I want them to speak up. <laughs> um, in our ABE ASE program, um, our teachers were able to really get on board um, very quickly in developing curriculum for uh, distance learning. And they use a variety of, of methods, the Zoom, Google Classroom, Google Meets, um, using different curriculum like um, NROC, Odysseyware, IXL, Reading Plus, um, that's for the ABE ASE program. And ESL has, um, their teachers are phenomenal and, and they're getting um, a lot of attendance. I attended one class yesterday and they had, I think 26 students um, in a Zoom, so that was fabulous. Um, the ABE ASE program, I think, is having more difficulty in student participation and student attendance. Um, and of course, the regular issues like um, technology and internet connection are some of the um, barriers um, that our students face. Um, but just in addition to that, I think motivation is difficult. Um, and even though we do have um, our instructional assistants and teachers con contacting um, the students and reaching out, it's still a little difficult to get connected um, and to get them to be consistent with their participation. So um, does anyone else from Torrance want to join in? Uh, this is Marcy Bergen, also from Torrance. Yes, we have had issues with um, students being motivated. Uh, we have students with trying to use cell phones with a uh, math program, Ed Ready from NROC, and it's not user friendly for cell phones. Um, we have students that don't have any computer access at home or they don't have the knowledge of how to use computers. So that's been an issue. Um, at this point, we're really looking for a, an online publisher that's going to have materials to, to handle our English department for the low level readers who are barely starting to read all the way up to the high school level readers. Um, something that will be online and hopefully cell phone friendly. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. Anybody else from South Bay, El Camino? Okay, and we did hear from Linwood. If we go down to Tri-Cities, Paramount also added, Lucia said they're using uh, Edgenuity for our high school students. ESL teachers are working with Google Classrooms. We are struggling with student attendance because of lack of 
computer skills. Uh, so let's go a little bit inland and I noticed Monterey uh, Peninsula had logged on. We'll get to them in just a little bit. But if uh, anybody from LA uh, Consortium wants to give a report out of how things are going. I noticed Justin was on the call. If anybody else, uh, including Justin, want to give us an update, that would be great. Sorry, Dale, I'm just unmuting myself. So um, I can give you uh, this update. So we had a board meeting this morning and a part of the board meeting had to do with uh, an update on what each member district was doing. I can say that um, a lot of the challenges that I'm hearing here are shared by members of our district, as well as some of the, uh, the great outcomes. Um, I think a lot of the, uh, the takeaway I had was there are a lot of great teachers and a lot of great personnel in the districts doing some really, really wonderful work to be innovative, uh, to work very, very hard to make this transition because the, the lifting to try to get everybody up online can be extraordinary. Uh, some member districts have a bit of an advantage. I know for uh, LACCD with uh, their Canvas platform, it lent itself uh, very well to getting teachers up online. Some other member districts were uh, having a little bit more difficulty uh, identifying platforms that would lend themselves uh, easily to get their students up and online. But I think all the districts uh, shared the same uh, desire to uh, get up, get online, and get moving forward and engaging their students as quickly as possible. And from uh, my takeaway from the meeting this morning was that all the districts are doing that, doing that actively and uh, continue to look for ways to uh, engage their students given the limitation of the demographic in terms of access to technology, uh, digital literacy, and uh, being at home with, with family members uh, and concerns about food security, uh, housing security. Um, but uh, in general, everybody is doing the best they can to, to get everybody up and online and engaged. Great, good to hear. All right, so we have what, about 15 minutes? I missed uh, Glendale. I think we had Marianne. I don't know if she's still on the call. Okay, if she's not still on the call. Uh, let's see, Long Beach. Uh, didn't hear anybody from Long Beach. I'm not sure if anybody from Long Beach is on the call, but. Uh, we can go to Santa Clarita, or we can go to Antelope, or we can go to Monterey Peninsula, back up. Feel free to chime in, or anybody else that's on the call that might not be in the contiguous area, but uh, called in today and, and wanted to report on how they're doing. This is uh, Serena Eichelberger with Monterey Adult School, and um, we um, have found a lot of innovation and success, um, particularly with those teachers who are already integrating a lot of technology into their programs. So students that were already familiar with Padlet and um, Remind app and all of those pieces, we've had double the attendance than we expected in those classes. And then for classes that didn't integrate as much technology, it's taken a little bit more time um, but we've had success with, um, on our main website, we have a link as soon as you go to our website to all of our teacher class pages. So we use primarily um, Padlet because we have some domain name issues with our students. Um, so we have Padlet for every class except for our high school diploma uses, um, uses Google Sites. And that allows like people to have access, whether they have just a smartphone or a computer. And then we use synchronous and asynchronous learning platforms. The way we kind of describe it to our students is um, more of a, a menu of choice. Uh, you can order the salad and do a little Burlington English if all, that's all you have time for. Or you can go with a five course meal and do um, Google Meets with synchronous learning. You can do Burlington English, you can do Kahoot, you can do Quizlet, um, and you know the assignments that are on Padlet. And so basically we came up with an attendance tracker to get that um, ironed out and kind of just doing a lot of 
pluses and deltas for our meetings of what, what's working and what needs to shift. Um, but we are still offering all of our programs, um, ESL, uh, high school diploma, high school equivalency, um, a couple of career tech ed and our parent education, the K-12 success. Um, we have adults, disabilities, computers. Um, and for our consortium, our members at MPC have moved all of, our all of their programs online and they are going to be um, offering online learning for the summer. And if um, restrictions loosen, some classes may be offered on site if they're a lab-based program. Um, we haven't heard too much from our partners at Carmel. Um, they may or may not be uh, continuing their services. And PG Adult School is continuing with um, online learning, mostly Burlington English for ESL and um, uh, Acellus for high school diploma. And I believe they're looking into, they're not having a whole lot of students access those platforms. So they're looking into some synchronous learning um, opportunities for their students as well. Um, I would say one of the other big successes at Monterey Adult School is having one of our classified staff members be a uh, tech support for students to get them logged on to Padlet, logged on to Google Meets, and then we also have direct instruction lessons for how to use the technology and be able to comment and um, all of our lessons are recorded. So even if students can't make it at that time or day, then they can still access the recording from the Padlet page. I think that's about it. All right, thanks, Serena. Uh, we did have a request uh, to share your attendance tracker. We did that in last week's newsletter, but feel free to do that again, Serena. And then Diana said she saw that Burbank Adult School is offering online and a phone number to register. So they must have figured out a way to get around signature and you're using kind of like a phone bank. Um, and Estella said, I saw the attendance tracker that Serena provided. It's awesome. So we'll get you hooked up uh, to buy. If you can't get a copy of it, we can uh, contact TAP and we'll send you a link to it. All right. So we got about eight minutes left. Anybody else before we go to our panel of experts? Okay, so panel of experts, that's Penny, Netta, Veronica, Jay, and myself. Well, I'm not an expert, but I, I just uh, joined the, the webinar. But um, just spend a couple of minutes, highlight the most important things coming up in the next week, things you want to point out, and uh, things that will be beneficial, and then we'll wrap up. So let's start with, with Jay. Hi. Uh, I guess the best thing for me to address is we had a big webinar earlier today. I know a lot of people tried to get in and could it. It was, it, we had a Zoom capacity of 300. Most of the participants, quite frankly, were out of California. But uh, I don't know if Carolyn wants to chime in at all. I think you're on the call. But there's some trainings that she'll be doing with CASAS on April 30th and on May 4th. Uh, I believe they'll be posted on OTAN, you know, early tomorrow, uh, but there'll be a couple related to EL Civics on the 30th. There'll be a couple related to pre and post testing on the 4th, but the one we did today was talking about the pilot study we're doing at CASAS for remote testing. We started phase one on Monday. We'll be doing that through the end of next week. We'll have a phase two study that starts May 4th. So we'll be including a lot of what was covered earlier today, as well as some more CDE specific information from Carolyn on those webinars on April 30th and May 4th. Yes. Great, thank you. Yeah, so I was oh. gonna, that was gonna be my piece, was that <laughs> stay tuned for information coming out on how to do remote co-ops and SIC, and, and then as well as appraisal pre and post testing. So. Uh, watch for information coming and save some time on April 30th and um, May 4th for those webinars. All right. Thanks, Carolyn. And of course, Carolyn wants to remind you to, if you haven't done the survey, please do the survey. 
And then uh, thank you, Jay. Penny, anything to offer in our quick little round table close up or wrap up? Uh, I think that um, uh, Janice posted our resource page earlier in the chat. You may need to scroll up a ways. Um, I can also share it online. But also, um, if you haven't, you are more than welcome to look at the offerings that OTAN is doing through CaliforniaAdultEdTraining.org. That's where OTAN, as well as CASAS and CalPRO post a lot of the webinars that they're hosting. And we do have several coming up um, if anybody's interested in terms of, um, you know, like using Screencastify. Uh, this can capture teacher lessons, et cetera. Uh, earlier, there was questions about, um, you know, getting some good reading resources for learners. We've got one coming up tomorrow on read theory that was also posted in the chat. So if, if you can, just kind of keep checking out the OTAN homepage, OTAN.us. Uh, we try to post all of the things that are coming up for the week. And um, it's a great way to get some new ideas and some new resources that might help you in your efforts to help your teachers uh, get connected with the learners and also providing that information to learners to keep on going. Um, and I don't know if I've missed anything, so I'll, I'll uh, uh, kind of leave it open. Maybe Netta has something to add if I've forgotten something. Um, and otherwise, uh, just reach out to OTAN for any help. We're willing to help give you a hand. Great, thanks. Netta. So I think um, Penny covered it. Um, really look at that um, resource guide and um, check out our webinars. Like I said, we have partnerships going on with um, some of the uh, vendors out there like HiSET and GED that are offering free resources along with um, many of our partners through nationally. So we have a couple of folks that are doing some positive or um, promising practices using distance learning strategies. So our calendar is always being added. There's webinars being added every day. So please take a look. Thank you. All right. And then before Veronica uh, goes and closes it out, I just wanted to remind everyone that had, we didn't talk about it today, but those with CTE programs, especially certified nursing, there's a webinar next week. I believe it's on Tuesday. We put it in the newsletter today um, that talks about how the uh, State Office of Public Health is dealing with the clinical part of the CNA programs. Uh, they might even go into other programs, but I think the focus is on certified nursing. So if you do have a program like that, I would suggest you get on that webinar because it's the first time we've had a chance to really talk with Department of Public Health and their training office as far as what they're qualifying for. And we have a huge need of CNAs in the state, but yet we can't, you know, pass the students based on no um, clinical work, uh, you know, on-site um, work. So if you uh, can tune into that one, we're going to do our own webinar probably in a couple of weeks on just adult ed healthcare programs and talk about, you know, what's, what's possible, what's not, where restrictions have been loosened by state uh, regulatory agencies, uh, those kind of things. So that, that'll be coming up too. So with that, I'll turn it over to Veronica. I'd like to thank everyone for participating today and we look forward to talking to you in the future. Veronica. Thank you, Neil, and thank you to everyone for participating in today's um, regional network meeting. We will continue these network meetings through May 6th, so if you have the desire to participate in other regions meetings, you are more than welcome to, and I can post a link to the registration page here. We'll also have the CAEP webinar, excuse me, the CAEP office hour this Friday at 1 o'clock p.m., and that's for the entire state to come in and continue to engage in this type of conversation about what's going on across the state as it relates to moving to distance learning. So definitely tune into that. And um, we do have our regional network page that we have developed. So we are recording each of these meetings and adding the recording to that page, along with any resources that are shared during the regional networking um, network meetings. So there will be a lot of resources there. And we're also looking into the possibility of opening up a Google group so that we will have quicker real time opportunity to share and 
provide um, resources and resolve issues that may be going on across the state. So be on the lookout for further communication and information regarding that. Um, we do send out an evaluation after each regional network meeting. So please be sure to fill that out once you receive it. It only takes about two or three minutes to complete. And that's another opportunity for you to let us know what it is that you need at this time so that we can effectively plan and hopefully you know, meet all your needs so that we're all able to transition, you know, appropriately and as efficient as possible. So again, thank you all very much for participating. We do appreciate your time and your engagement. And if you need anything, please contact TAP and we will be there for you. So thank you all and have a great afternoon.